Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my assembly language video tutorial. Now, this is going to be the big tutorial. After this tutorial, you are basically going to be able to write real assembly language programs because we're going to get more into directives, but more importantly, we're going to cover stacks as well as how to use C functions and on top of that, how to create custom functions. So you're going to have available to you numerous C functions that are available as well as be able to pretty much create any other type of custom function that you would want to by the end of this tutorial. And like always, the best way to learn this stuff is in the description underneath the video. There is a link to a transcript as well as all of the code. Go and get that, put that on your screen, and as you watch the video, as you pause your way through it, take notes in your own language, and by the end you'll have a complete understanding of how to build really complete assembly language programs. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Now the very first thing we're going to cover here is the stack. Now with a stack, you are literally stacking data on top of other data. And you can think of a stack of paper or something like that. Now when you want to retrieve data, you would take off the last page you put on top. And this is called last in, first out. Now a stack is going to be implemented by keeping track of two pointers, the base pointer, which is going to be the place in memory where the stack begins, and then the stack pointer, which is going to be the memory location of the top of the stack. Now addresses are going to be assigned to data, either in an ascending or descending in value, and if it ascends, we have to increase the value of the stack pointer, and if it descends, we'll have to decrease it. So in essence, we will be increasing or decreasing the stack pointer address as we move through the stack. So if that didn't make any sense, why don't I jump over and write some code? Okay, so here I am in assembly tut.s once again, and I'm just going to come in here and just start writing some code. So just like before, we're going to go global and start, and then we will define start. We're going to come in here and move two values into two different registers. And R2, we're going to put a number 2 inside of there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the value of 1 in the stack pointer. So we're just going to go and store this inside of here. And then what I want to do is move 4 bytes within my memory. So to do that, I'm going to go stack pointer. That's what the SP stands for. And I'm just going to go negative 4. And that's going to move me inside of memory. Now. At the very end of this, I'm going to put an exclamation mark, and this is known as the write back. And what this is going to do is update the register so it can be used for another push onto the stack, which is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to push onto my stack. So reference the stack pointer once again, and then we're going to be moving through memory. And then once again, we are going to update our register. Now, you can play around with this on your own, but what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to unload the data off of this. So I'm throwing one in first, and then I'm throwing two in second. Well, now what I'm going to do is unload the last thing that I put in, last in, first out. And to do that, I just reference the stack pointer. And then there afterwards, I'm going to once again move through memory. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Here I'm overwriting this. Like I said, you should go in there and go and have this line of code run and see what happens and then run this line of code. And then it's going to make more sense. And then at the end, once again, I'm going to move back to the top of the stack. And then after that, I can just go end and then I can just exit out of this or exit out to the terminal and we can just escape out of this and WQ come in and do a make and then we can come in and run this guy and you can see that one was the final result that came out of there well you may ask yourself why did it work that way well, let's jump back inside of here well basically what I'm doing here is this time I'm moving this into register one moving the two into register two here I'm moving the one onto the stack and then I'm putting the two on top of the stack here I'm unloading the two and here I'm unloading the one and that is the reason why you get one as your final result we're gonna do a little bit more complicated example here but what I want to talk about next is how we can store or push multiple pieces of data using STM or store multiple and also how we can load multiple using LDM pieces of data off of the stack and there are four types of stacks depending on if the address the stack pointer points to has a value or not meaning that it's either full or empty and whether the addresses ascend or descend like I said before and the two commands STM and LDM are going to be postfixed with two character codes depending upon the type of stack that they are 
and here you can see the eight different ways that you could use those, but for the most part, you're only gonna use them in one way. And whenever you use these to push and then pull the data, you're going to want to use the opposite code for LDM as well as SDM. So for example, if you're going to use SDMDB to push, in that situation, you are then going to use LDMIA to pull. So I'm gonna jump over and write some code and make this more understandable. So here we are once again. And let's jump into Vim, keep everything here basically the same. I'm going to use different registers here. So here I'm going to come in and I'm going to use register 4 here, and I'm going to use register 5 here. Keep that exactly the same. I'm going to escape out of this, hit V, delete all this stuff. There that is, that's all gone. Jump back into insert mode, and then I'm going to call S. T M D B, and like I said previously, we can refer to the stack pointer using SP, then going to put an exclamation mark here. Like I said before, this is referred to as write back, and what this is going to do is update the register so it can be used for another push onto the stack. And then here, what I'm going to do is load multiple or push multiple values onto the stack all on one line. So I can throw both of those values right on there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go move R4 and three, and move into register five, the value of four, and then let's do something like add and store these in register zero, or four and zero, just to prove that we are using these stack values. Whenever we do this, I'm gonna go R zero, R zero, R five, and then I'm going to remove the eight bytes of data that are on the stack and throw them back into registers R4 and R5. And how I do that is LDMIA, call the stack pointer again. We're going to write back to the stack pointer to update it after we make this change. Go in there like this. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing we did previously. Throw that inside of there. Now let's go and let's make this R0 and make this R4 and this R5. Now basically what I'm doing here is I'm summing multiple different values using both values that are stored in registers as well as values that are stored on the stack. So what we're gonna do here first is we're gonna take R0 and we are going to add R4 or the value of three plus zero to get a value of three stored in R0. Then we're going to add four to three to get a value of seven. Then we're gonna jump into the stack where we have stored the values of one and two. We're going to pull those values out, stick them in registers four and register five. And then we're going to add on the value of one and the value of two. And whenever we do that, that should give us a final result of 10. So I'm just showing you how we can store values inside of a stack, multiple values, and then pull multiple values out of the stack. So let's come in here, let's exit out of that. Let's call make on this and then let's come in and let's output our data. And you can see right there is the value of 10. So that's a way that you can go and either store individual values one by one inside of the stack, and then also how you can both store as well as retrieve multiple values from the stack. And pretty much everything else is gonna be built upon those two concepts. So now I'd like to jump over and do something a little bit more exciting and show you how we can use C functions inside of our assembly language. Okay, so we're going to be writing some real programs here, basically. So let's come in. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to define some data we want. And I want to set aside four bytes of memory inside of here. And here we're going to have a question we're going to print out on our screen. Here I am going to be storing a string. And this directive, ASCIZ, is going to add a zero byte at the end of the string. It's going to make it easy to find it inside of memory. And I'm going to print out this string. What is your favorite number? And I'm going to get into more elaborate things than this here in a second. And let's also come in and define a whole bunch of other different things we want to store inside of here. So we will set that aside and we will have a message that's going to print out on our screen. And here we're going to be able to put some data inside of here. This is going to be a decimal. It is a great number and we'll throw a new line at the end of that string be line four and this is going to be the pattern we are going to be using scanf here as well as printf which are in the c libraries and how we define the type of data we're going to be putting here that's going to be used by printf to print out the information as well as scanf where we basically are going to go and define the type of data that we expect we're going to use a pattern and that pattern is going to be represented by percentage sign D. Be a line four once again. 
and this is going to be the number that you're going to be able to enter in here. And then finally, we are going to be storing the link pointer because we must do that anytime we're using functions. And I'm just going to call this link pointer backup and store that in a word of data. Now here we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to have to be coming inside of here and let's just get rid of all this other stuff that we have here. So let's just go B and delete all this stuff. Delete. And the very first thing we're going to need to do is now that we're outside of our data part and we're going to be writing some assembly code, we have to define text here. And then I need to direct the compiler so that it can tell LIBC or the standard C library where main is going to be located. So I'm going to go global main and then function main and then I can go and define the main function right like this. And here what we're going to need to do is store the link register so that it is going to be set back to its proper location whenever we jump outside of our function. And how we're going to do that is store this in the first register address and there's the link register backup. Why don't I jump down here and define that so that that is all set up. So I basically have to define addresses for all of these different pieces of data. So I'm going to go question word and this is going to reference our question data and that's this guy up here so da, 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 da. there's the question so that's what I'm referencing and this will be our message address for our pattern address for the number they're going to be entering and then address for the link register backup that we're going to be using link register backup and then on top of that I said we wanted to use printf as well as scanf from the standard C library so I'm going to say global printf and global scanf and there we have those available to us now so now we can jump back up into our main function write some more code here so here I have the address where I want to store the backup for my link register and I loaded that up and now I'm going to store that value inside of there link register and I'm going to store it in register 1 so that's all set up and then how I'm going to be able to come in there later on and pull it back out is I'm going to say and you're going to do this with every function you define you're going to see here in a moment when I do another one so at the end of my function I want to reset the link register back to where it was so I'm going to go link register back up for the address LDR LR this will always be done in exactly the same way there's a couple different ways of doing it but this is the way I'm going to do it and then bx lr is going to return from our main function and then inside of here we can actually start writing our code so whenever you do functions you're always going to do this first and you're always going to do this last so you have to make sure that the link register is all set up properly okay so let's go in here and write some real code very first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to load my question that i want to print out on the screen so i'm going to throw that into register zero and you're always going to do this with functions you're going to be storing values in register zero one two or three and basically with any function you define you're going to be able to pass parameters to them using register zero one two and three if you're going to want to pass more, you're going to use the stack, which we just previously referred to. And basically your function is going to be able to modify any of these registers, and you can also modify other registers, but their values must be restored upon exiting the function. You're also going to be able to modify the stack pointer, but must restore its entry value upon exiting, and this is to be avoided if at all possible. And then, of course, like I said previously, the link, the link register is not going to be able to be changed. But if you do change it, you're going to want to set it back. And that's what we did to this first block. Here we're storing the link register. Here we're returning it to its default. So here we're going to be storing the question that we want to be printed out on the screen using printf. We're then going to be able to call for printf to, to run by going bl printf. We're going to branch to it. After printf does its job, it's going to jump back inside of here. And here we want to define the pattern for scanf and then where to store the name that the user types inside of here. So we're going to go and load this. Again, we're going to always start off with R0 whenever we're passing parameters to our functions, whether they're custom functions or they're RC functions. And then that's the pattern. Remember, it's a decimal value. And then here is where the value will be stored whenever they enter it. And then to call scanf, just branch to it, just like you did previously. And it's going to automatically pass those parameters inside of there. And then what you want to do is come in here and print the message with the embedded value that they just entered inside of there. So address once again, 
We're going to pass in message. We're going to then come in and pass inside the number that the user passed in and said was their favorite number. We're going to then get the value out of that address, and we do that by referencing R1. And then finally, to print out that full response, we will call printf once again. And then down here, we are going to come in and reset our link register. So let's just look at this exactly what's going on. Basically, it is going to print out this message right here. What is your favorite number? And it is going to do that right here. These two lines of code, they're going to load in the question and print them out. Then it's going to come in here and scan F is going to need the pattern that it's going to want to read that data in. And then it's going to be stored, the value they enter, into number. And you can see that if we come down here, there it is. There's the pattern. We're telling it's a decimal and this is where to store it. And then finally, we have the message we want to print out and the value stored inside of it and quit out of that. One thing that's important, though, is we're going to have to compile this in a completely different way. So we're going to go into our make file here and make a change. I'm going to come down here to the very end of this guy and I'm going to come in. And just to make this nice and simple, I'm going to call this GCC and I'm going to tab in. Remember, always the tab in and I'm going to go GCC dash O, not the number O, the letter O. And I'm going to go assembly tut and then assembly tut dot S. Jump out of that, quit, and then I can just go make GCC. There it goes and it compiles. And then I'm going to come in and call for my program to run. And it's going to say, what's your favorite number? I'm going to say 10 hit enter and it's going to come back as 10 is a great number. So you can see now you're actually interacting with your code. And up next, we're going to actually create custom functions, which I'm going to show you in a second. But I just thought of something that I forgot to talk about. And that is another directive that's quite useful. And it is the equivalent directive. So I'm going to jump into assembly tut once again. I'm going to delete everything out of that. How do I do that? I go colon percent sign D and everything's been deleted. And to demonstrate equivalent, I'm going to go global and start. And basically what the EQU directive is going to do is allow you to assign a value to a name, sort of like variable names are used in most programming languages. A lot of people like to use it because it makes a lot more sense. Now we'll go R0. And here is an example. So instead of putting two inside of there, I'm going to write the word two. And then we're going to end just like we always end. And then down here, I'm going to define that two, the number two can be represented with the written out word two. To do that, you just go equivalent, and you type in two, and then you type in two. And after we have this all set, you're going to see that it is going to print out the number two on the screen. And there it did. Okay, just a directive that just came to mind and that I wanted to make sure I covered before I started writing custom functions, which is what I'm going to do right now. And for homework, you can consider that part of the homework is to go in there and take those C functions and then use them inside of your assembly code to see how they work by passing different parameters to them and so forth and so on. So quite interesting definitely getting more interesting than we have previously. Now once again, functions are going to allow us to structure and reuse our code, and I just want to say this once more. You're going to be able to pass parameters to them using the registers R0, R1, R2, and R3. That is how you're going to pass them in. If you want to pass more, you're going to use store these values on the stack and then pull them off the stack inside of the function. And basically, you're going to be able to modify other registers inside of your function, but you should set them back to their original values whenever you do that. And let me just show you how you would set them back to your original value. Basically, to set them back, you're going to have this right here at the beginning of your function. And I already told you about right back. Here, we're going to, whenever we enter our function, we are going to say that we want to store those values right like that. And then whenever we leave our function, we're going to go LD, MFD stack pointer once again, and R4 through R12. So that's how you would go and store values in registers 4 through 12, and then how you would restore them whenever you leave the function. All right, just in case you are wondering about that. And once again, I wouldn't change or modify the stack pointer, which is in register 13. You can, but it's going to have to be restored. And like always, you are always going to store the link register whenever you first enter your function as well as restore it whenever you leave it. Another thing that's important to know is whenever we leave a function, it is going to return the value inside of register zero, always. And enough talking, why don't we just write ourselves a function here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna define 
some data. And what this is going to do, this program we're going to write, is it's going to allow the user to enter in two values, and it's going to sum those values, and it's going to print that, that information or that sum out on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define all the different functions or the different variables I want to want inside of here. And I'm going to have a message that's going to print out on the screen. So get value one, and I'm just going to print out on the screen number one and allow them to come in there and enter a value. And I'm going to throw a new line after this. I'm going to do the same thing for number two. So I'm going to copy that. So I'm just going to change this. Whoops, let's change this to value and value. And here we'll have it be value two and change this to two as well. We're also going to have to come in and let's just paste this inside of here as well. We're also going to be storing the pattern. Again, we're going to be accepting two values inside of here, and, but they're both going to be decimals. So let's go call this pattern again, just because that makes sense in my head. Leave this be exactly the same. And you can reuse these patterns both times. So D. I'm also going to be able to store the value that they enter inside of here. So the very first value that they're going to enter in that they want to be summed, I'm gonna call it number one. And this isn't going to be a string. Instead, this is going to be a word of data. Give it a value of zero. We're going to then come in here. Also, we're going to be storing number two that they enter inside of here. Once again, this is going to be a word of data. And we're going to give it the default value of zero once again. I'm also going to be storing the sum of those values. So sum and give it a default value of zero. We're also going to have to come in here and print out output for our program. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to call this output. And then we can throw our pattern directly inside of this, just like we do with printf whenever we're programming with C. I'm assuming you know C if you're sitting here looking at an assembly language program, or at least you're somewhat aware of it. So there's that. That's going to be our output. And then we're going to need to back up the link register two times, because we're going to do it inside of our main function as well as inside of our customer function we're going to be making. And once again, this is going to be a word, default value of zero. And then I'm going to do the same thing for backing up the second link register, right like that. Okay, so now we have all that set up. Now we're going to have to come in here and define that we're no longer in our data section. So we're going to go and put text inside of here. And here we'll create our custom function. So I'm going to call this sum values, and to define our custom function, we go sum values. Pretty simple, just like we did with main. Very first thing I'm going to do is save my link register. Remember, I told you to do that all the time, and then store the link register inside of there. We're going to sum the two parameters that are passed inside here. Remember, it's always going to be register zero that's going to be returned whenever our function is done executing. And whenever you pass an attribute inside of here, the very first attribute goes in R0. Second one goes inside of R1. And it's going to return R0 because that's always what's going to happen, no matter what you have left over inside of your function. And then you're going to need to come in here and restore your link register. Back up to link register and get the value out of there. And then how we exit our functions is we call BXLR. We pass back the link register. And that's the way that always works very end here. I'm going to have address for link register backup to word and let's link this to the link register backup. Then we're going to be getting rid of start here. We're not going to be using start of course because we didn't use it previously. What we're going to do here is tell the uh, C library where main is going to be located. So I'm going to say global main and then we can come down inside of this and let's define main. Let's come in here and delete all this stuff. And what do you do with every single one of your functions whenever you first start them off? You're going to store the link register, of course. I then like to come in here and define my addresses. So we got address, get value one, which is going to be the message that's going to be asked of the user of our software. Get value one, out of there. And let's copy this because I'm going to use this a whole bunch of different times. And this is going to be get value two and the pattern and the address that's assigned to the pattern. The number we're going to be storing inside of this. We're going to be doing the same thing with number two. And of course, we'll also need to do this for sum, as well as the output, which we're gonna put on the screen. And then finally, the backup for our link register. And there we go. And we're gonna be using the C functions for printf 
just like we did previously. We're making a custom function, or we already did, but I want to use these just to save some time. And there's also good homework. Go in there and try to remake printf as well as scanf inside of custom functions. You can do it because I covered how to do that in the previous tutorial. Okay, so now we have that all set up. We're back inside of main, and let's start writing our regular program here that's going to call our custom function for us. Very first thing we're going to want to do is print out the message that we want them to enter a value that we can sum. And we will go to address get value one, which is the message that we want to print out on the screen. And then we want to call print f and have it print that message. And that's how easy that is to do. Now we want to save the value that they enter using scanf. So I'm going to go r0, tell them what type of data to expect, which is going to be a decimal or an integer, and where we want that data to be stored at. Give them the address for number one, and then call for scanf to execute. Then we're going to do exactly the same thing for the second value. Copy those, hit Y, big P. We can use register zero once again. We're just going to use this for the message. The pattern is going to be exactly the same, and we're going to be storing that number two. So pretty good. So now that we have those two set up, what we're going to need to do is send those values to our custom function so that they can be summed. And to do so, we're going to go register zero, and we're going to pass in the first number that they entered into register zero, which is going to be parameter whatever, the very first parameter passed inside. Or actually, we want to get the value out of that address. And why don't we come in here and copy this as well. So let's change this to register one and change this to number two. And then this is going to be one, and this will be one. And then to call our custom function, we branch to sum values. After we do that, we want to store the value that is returned from the function. And that's going to be in register R0, of course. We're going to store it in R3 so we can print it out on the screen in the proper order. So there's R0. And then we just need to assign the values to provide our output. So this is all going to be for printf. So in the very first register, we have to provide the output message. Let's go up here and look at it again, just so you can see what it looks like. So here is our output message right there. There's output. So this is what's going to be passed inside of printf. And then we're just going to define what goes here, what goes here, and what goes here for a total of four total parameters that are going to be passed to our printf function. So let's come in here and do that. So the very first one is R0, which is going to be the message itself, address, output. Then we're going to have to get the value that we have for the very first number they entered by referencing address number one. And then we're going to load that value into the first or second register, however you want to refer to it. Then we're going to do exactly the same thing for the second value that they entered inside of here. Copy that, paste that inside of here, and we're going to put that in register 2, of course, because that is going to be going into the second part of our printf message that we have, R2. And then finally, the last thing we're going to put inside of there is going to be the sum, or actually it's already inside of there, and that's in register 3. So what we need to do now is just call for the printf function to execute and it will do so. And with all of our functions, we need to restore the link register as the last thing that we do. And then to end our function, like all of our functions, we put BXLR, and let's jump out of that. We're gonna go make GCC, call for our function to execute. It's gonna ask me for the first number, I'm gonna put a two inside of there. Second number, put a three inside of there, and it's gonna go two plus three is equal to five. So pretty cool. Long-winded, but really the meat of the code really isn't that long. One thing that's kind of neat uh, to end off everything here is to show you how to disassemble the code if you want to see what it actually looks like with those C functions inside of there and all that other stuff. To do so, you can come in here and go obj dump d and pass in assembly tut. And there you can see all the different functions and all that stuff and what it looks like. And of course, you can come up here and cycle through all that. So there you go, guys. That is how we can use C functions in our assembly language code. That is how we can write uh, customized functions. There's a little bit more information on directives, as well as how we can store individual and then pull individual values off the stack. And on top of that, how to pass multiple values and pull multiple values off the stack. So go in there, experiment a ton. There's a lot of different things you can do with this information. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.